Um, I couldn't find any uh, videos on social media, so I decided to make my own. So that being said, uh, right now we are on uh, cleaning and corrosion control. It has 34 questions, and I was going to say my assistant will read. Cleaning and corrosion control, 34 questions, enlist 12 items. This way, so I don't have Tap to, to activate. I mean, this way, so I don't have to read, so she's going to read it for me. And if you guys want to read, you guys can read along. Or if not, you could just hear the video and then let, let it uh, let it just read. And then try to answer the question before, try to answer the question before I answer the question. And if at any point I'm going too fast, you guys can pause it. Or if I'm going too slow, you guys should just uh, fast forward. And that being said, let's start. Question one of thirty-four. Oh, guys, and don't forget to subscribe. This was so you guys also do not forget uh, my channel, just so you guys can continue uh, studying. Okay. Intergranular corrosion in aluminum alloy parts. Not selected may be detected by surface pitting and white powdery deposit formed on the surface of the metal radio button. Tap to talk. Not selected, commonly appears as thread-like filaments of corrosion products under a dense film of paint, radio button. Not selected, cannot always be detected by surface indications, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Intergranular corrosion forms along the grain boundaries within an aluminum alloy. Since this type of corrosion does not necessarily extend all the way to the surface of the metal in its early stages, it is quite possible for intergranular corrosion to reach an advanced state before it shows up on the surface. Okay. Next. Question 2 of 34. A non-electrolytic chemical treatment for aluminum alloys to increase corrosion resistance and paint bonding qualities is called. Not selected. Allodizing. Selected. EXPL. Allodizing is the depositing of an oxide film on the surface of aluminum alloy by the application of the patented chemical, allodyne. The generic term for this type of non-electrolytic corrosion protection is conversion coating. Anodizing is a method of electrolytically depositing a hard film of aluminum hydroxide on the surface of the metal. Okay. Next. Question 3 of 34. Which of the following is an acceptable first step procedure to help prevent scratching when cleaning a transparent plastic surface? Not selected, gently wipe the surface with a clean, dry, soft cloth, radio button. Tap to toggle. Not selected, gently wipe the surface with a clean, soft cloth moistened with demineralized or distilled water, radio button. Tap to toggle. Selected. Not selected, flush the surface with clean water, radio button. Selected. EXPL. When cleaning the transparent plastic windshield of an aircraft, you should first flush it with a stream of clean fresh water to remove all sand and grit from the surface. After the surface is free of anything that can scratch the soft plastic, it can be washed with soap and water and then rinsed. Rep. Okay. Next. Question 4 of 34. Spilled mercury on aluminum. Not selected. Causes rapid and severe corrosion that is very difficult to control. Radio. Selected. EXPL. Mercury spilled in an aircraft requires immediate action for its isolation and recovery to prevent it from causing corrosion damage and embrittlement of the aluminum structural components. Mercury is highly toxic and spreads very easily from one surface to another. Okay. Next. Question 5 of 34. A primary cause of intergranular corrosion is. Not selected. Improper heat treatment. Radio selected. EXPL. One of the primary causes for intergranular corrosion is improper heat treatment. If there is a delay in the time between the removal of a metal part from the heat treatment oven and the time the part is quenched, the grains of the metal have an opportunity to grow large enough that an electrical potential exists across the grain boundaries. This potential within the metal causes the formation of intergranular corrosion. Okay. Next. Question 6 of 34. The rust or corrosion that occurs with most metals is the result of 
not selected, electron flow in or between metals from cathodic to anodic areas, radio button. Selected. Not selected, blocking the flow of electrons in homogeneous metals, or between dissimilar metals, radio button. Selected. Not selected, a tendency for them to return to their natural state. Selected. EXPL. Corrosion is a natural phenomenon which attacks metal by chemical or electrochemical action and converts it into a metallic compound, such as an oxide, hydroxide, or sulfate. Corrosion occurs because of the tendency for metals to return to their natural state. Noble metals like gold and platinum do not corrode since they are chemically uncombined in their natural state. Okay. Next. Question 7 of 34. Which of these materials is the most cathodic? Not selected, stainless steel, radio button. Selected, EXPL. Some of the common metals in the order of their electrochemical activity are Most anodic, magnesium, zinc, cadmium, 7075 aluminum alloy, 2024 aluminum alloy, mild steel, copper, stainless steel, chromium, gold, most cathodic, reference, AC. Some of the common metals in the order, OK, button. Tap to activate. Next button. Question 8 of 34. Which of these materials is the most anodic? Not selected, magnesium, re selected, EXPL. Some of the common metals in the order of their electrochemical activity are most anodic, magnesium, zinc, cadmium, 7075 aluminum alloy, 2024 aluminum alloy, mild steel, copper, stainless steel, chromium, gold. Most cathodic. Reference, AC 43 to 4A. Okay. Next. Question 9 of 34. Which of the following are acceptable to use in cleaning anodized surfaces? 1. Steel wool. 2. Brass wire brush. 3. Aluminum wool. 4. Stainless steel wire brush. 5. Fiber bristle brush. Not selected, 3 and 5, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Anodized surfaces should never be cleaned with anything that could scratch through the anodizing and expose the untreated alloy, or that could contaminate the surface. For this reason only aluminum wool or fiber bristle brushes are suitable for cleaning these surfaces. Okay. Next. Question 10 of 34. Galvanic corrosion is likely to be most rapid and severe when... Not selected, the surface area of the cathodic metal is smaller than surface area of the anodic metal, radio button. Not selected, the surface area of the anodic metal is smaller than the surface area of the cathodic metal, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Galvanic corrosion occurs when two dissimilar metals make electrical contact in the presence of an electrolyte. The rate at which corrosion occurs depends on the difference in the activities of the two metals. The greater the difference, the faster the corrosion occurs. The rate of galvanic corrosion also depends on the size of the parts in contact. If the surface area of the corroding material, the anode, is smaller than the surface area of the less active metal, the cathode, corrosion will be rapid and severe. Reference, AMTG Chapter 8. Okay. Next. Question 11 of 34. One way of obtaining increased resistance to stress corrosion cracking is by not selected, relieving compressive stresses via heat treatment on the metal surface, radio button. Selected. Not selected, creating compressive stresses via shot peening on the metal surface, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Stress corrosion cracking is an intergranular cracking of the metal which is caused by a combination of stress and corrosion. Shot peening a metal surface increases its resistance to stress corrosion cracking by creating compressive stresses on the surface. Any applied tensile stress must first overcome the surface compression before the tensile stress is felt. Reference, AC 43-4A. to Okay. Next. Question 12 of 34. 1. In the corrosion process, it is the cathodic area or dissimilar cathodic material that corrodes. 
2. In the galvanic or electrochemical series for metals, the most anodic metals are those that will give up electrons most easily. Regarding the above statements, not selected, only number 2 is true. Selected. EXPL. Statement 1, is false. It is the anodic, not the cathodic, material that is destroyed in the corrosion process. Statement 2, is true. Corrosion occurs in an anodic material when it gives up electrons to a cathodic material. The more easily a material gives up electrons, the more anodic, or corrosive, it is. Okay. Next. Question 13 of 34. Which of the following are acceptable to use when utilizing chemical cleaning agents on aircraft? 1. Synthetic fiber wiping cloths when using a flammable agent. 2. Cotton fiber wiping cloths when using a flammable agent. 3. Atomizing spray equipment. Not selected. 1. Radio button. Selected. Not selected. 2. Radio button. T selected. Not selected. 2 and 3. Radio button. EXP. When cleaning and or depainting an aircraft surface with a flammable agent, use only a cotton wiping cloth or a natural bristle brush. Synthetic fibers tend to create unsafe charges of static electricity that could ignite the flammable agent. Emulsion-type cleaning agents may be applied to the surface with atomizing spray equipment. After the agent has penetrated the dirt or exhaust residue, it is scrubbed with a natural bristle brush and washed from the surface. Reference, AMTG Chapter 8. Okay. Next. Question 14 of 34. A primary reason why ordinary or otherwise non-approved cleaning compounds should not be used when washing aircraft is because their use can result in Not selected. Hydrogen embrittlement in metal structures. Radio button. Selected. EXPL. Some non-approved commercial cleaning compounds can cause a chemical reaction with some of the metals used in aircraft structure. This reaction releases hydrogen gas that can be absorbed into the metal and cause hydrogen embrittlement which weakens the metal and can cause cracking and failure. Reference, AC 43-4. Okay. Next. Question 15 of 34. For which of the following reasons would a water break test be conducted? Not selected, to make certain that a bare metal surface is thoroughly clean, radio button. Tap to not selected, to make certain that an anodizing coating has been sufficiently removed before an electrical bonding connection can be made, radio button. Ta selected. Not selected, to make certain that a bare metal surface is thoroughly clean, radio Selected. EXPL. Allodyne can be applied to a surface after all traces of corrosion have been removed. The surface should be chemically cleaned until it supports an unbroken water film. Any breaks in the film of rinse water show that there's some wax, grease, or oil on the surface, and further cleaning must be done. Reference, AMTG Chapter 8. Okay. Next. Question 16 of 34. Corrosion caused by galvanic action is the result of Not selected, contact between two unlike metals, radio button. Selected. EXP. Galvanic corrosion is caused by an electrolytic action that takes place when two metals that have a different place in the galvanic scale are in contact with each other and are covered with an electrolyte. The more anodic of the metals reacts with the electrolyte and some of it changes into salts, it corrodes. Okay. Next. Question 7. The interior surface of sealed structural steel tubing would be best protected against corrosion by which of the following? Not selected. A coating of linseed oil. Radio button. Selected. EXPL. The inside of structural steel tubing on an aircraft is protected from rust and corrosion by drilling small holes in the end of each section of the tube and pumping linseed oil through the hole. After the inside is thoroughly coated, the excess oil is drained out and the hole is sealed with a drive screw or by welding it shut. Okay. Next. Question 18 of 34. Why is it important not to rotate the crankshaft after the corrosion preventive mixture has been put into the cylinders on engines prepared for storage? Not selected, the seal of corrosion preventive mixture will be broken, radio button. Selected. EXPL. 
When a reciprocating engine is prepared for storage, the inside of the cylinders are sprayed with a mixture of engine oil and a preservative oil. The oil mixture forms a seal on the cylinder wall and across the top of the piston. This mixture keeps air and moisture away from the metal surface. If the propeller is turned, the pistons will move and break the seal so that air and moisture can reach the cylinder walls and cause them to rust. Reference, AMTG Chapter 8. Okay. Next. Question 19 of 34. Caustic, pause button. Caustic cleaning products used on aluminum structures have the effect of producing. Not selected, corrosion, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Aluminum alloys such as those used in an aircraft structure are reactive metals. This means that they are likely to react with chemicals to form salts corrosion. Many caustic cleaning products react with aluminum alloy and cause them to corrode. Okay. Next. Question 20 of 34. Spreading corrosion is most likely to occur. Not selected. When two surfaces fit tightly together but can move relative to one another, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Threading corrosion is a form of corrosion that forms between closely fitting assembled parts that have a slight amount of relative motion. When sheets of aluminum alloy are riveted together, there should be no relative motion between the sheets or between the sheets and the rivets. But if there is a slight bit of movement, the protective oxide coating will be rubbed off of the metal and a new oxide coating will form. The material that has been rubbed off acts as an abrasive and accelerates the wear. Reference, AMTG Chapter 8. Okay. Next. Question 21 of 34. Of the following, when and or where is galvanic corrosion is most likely to occur? Not selected, when an electrolyte water covers the surface of an aluminum skin, seeps into the cracks between lap joints, and oxygen is excluded from the area, radio button. Tap to toggle. Not selected, at the interface of a steel fastener and aluminum alloy inspection plate in the presence of an electrolyte radio button. Tap to selected. EXP Galvanic corrosion occurs any time two dissimilar metals make electrical contact in the presence of an electrolyte. Okay. Next. Question 22 of 34. How may magnesium engine parts be cleaned? Not selected, soak in a 20% caustic soda solution, radio button. Tap to top. Selected. Not selected, spray with mech, methyl ethyl ketone, radio button. Selected. Not selected, wash with a commercial solvent, decarbonize, and scrape or grit blast, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Magnesium engine parts are cleaned by washing them with a commercial solvent such as naphtha or stoddard solvent, then soaking them in a decarbonizer that has been proven safe for magnesium. Any hard deposits that are not removed by this treatment can be removed with a scraper or with a grit blast. Okay. Next. Question 23 of 34. Select the solvent used to clean acrylics and rubber. Not selected. Aliphatic naphtha. Radio button. Selected. EXPL Aliphatic naphtha is the only one of the three materials listed here that will not damage rubber or acrylic plastic. Be sure that aromatic naphtha, a coal tar derivative, is not used. Okay. Next. Question 24 of 34. The lifting or flaking of the metal at the surface due to delamination of grain boundaries caused by the pressure of corrosion residual product buildup is called. Not selected, exfoliation, radio button. Selected, EXPL. Exfoliation corrosion is a severe form of intergranular corrosion that normally forms in extruded metal. When metal is extruded, its grain structure is basically arranged in a series of layers. If an extrusion is improperly heat treated, the grains are enlarged to the extent that intergranular corrosion can form along the grain boundaries within the metal. Severe intergranular corrosion in an extruded material causes it to delaminate the layers of the metal to push apart. The surface of the metal lifts or flakes off. Okay. Next. What may be... Question 25 of 34. What may be used to remove corrosion from highly stressed steel surfaces? Not selected. Fine grit aluminum oxide. Radio button. Selected. 
EXPL. Any corrosion on the surface of a highly stressed steel part is potentially dangerous, and all of the corrosion products must be removed. The removal can be done with mild abrasive papers such as rouge or fine grit aluminum oxide, or fine buffing compounds on cloth buffing wheels. Okay. Next. Which of question 26 of 34. Which of the following may not be detectable even by careful visual inspection of the surface of aluminum alloy parts or structures? Not selected, intergranular corrosion, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Intergranular corrosion is an attack along the grain boundaries of an alloy and commonly results from a lack of uniformity in the alloy structure. Intergranular corrosion is difficult to detect in its early stage, and ultrasonic and eddy current inspection methods must be used. Okay. Next. Question 27 of 34. Corrosion should be removed from magnesium parts with a Not selected, stiff, non-metallic brush, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Mechanical removal of corrosion from magnesium parts should be limited to the use of stiff hog bristle brushes and similar non-metallic cleaning tools. Okay. Next. Question 28 of 34. When an anodized surface coating is damaged in service, it can be partially restored by Not selected, chemical surface treatment, radio button. Selected. EXPL. An anodized coating is an electrolytically deposited film of oxide that covers the surface of the metal and keeps air and moisture away from it. If this coating is damaged, the metal can corrode. Damaged anodized coating can be repaired by treating the damaged area with a chemical conversion coating material such as allodyne. This chemical treatment forms a hard oxide film on the surface much like the anodized surface. Okay. Next. Question 29 of 34. Nickel cadmium battery cases and drain surfaces which have been affected by electrolytes should be neutralized with a solution of not selected, boric acid, radio button. Tap to toggle. Selected. EXPL. An area that has been affected by the electrolyte from a nickel cadmium battery should be washed and neutralized with ammonia or a boric acid solution, allowed to dry thoroughly, then painted with an alkali resisting varnish. Reference AMTG Chapter 8. Okay. Next. Question 30 of 34. Select the solvent recommended for wipey down of cleaned surfaces just before painting. Not selected. Aliphatic naphtha, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Aliphatic naphtha is a petroleum product between gasoline and kerosene in its characteristics. It is well suited for use as a cleaning agent for removing fingerprints, dust, and oily deposits that have settled on a surface to prepare the surface for painting. Dry cleaning solvent, such as Stoddard solvent, leaves a slight residue on the surface that can interfere with the adhesion of the paint. Aromatic naphtha is a coal tar derivative that is toxic and attacks acrylics and rubber products. It is not suitable for wiping down a surface before painting. Re okay. Next. Question 31 of 34. What should be done to prevent rapid deterioration when oil or grease come in contact with a tire? Not selected. Wipe the tire thoroughly with a dry cloth and then rinse with clean water. Radio button. Tap to toggle. Not selected, wipe the tire with a dry cloth followed by a wash down and rinse with soap and water, radio button. Selected. EXPL. When an aircraft tire comes in contact with oil or grease, remove all of the excess material by wiping it with a dry cloth. Then wash the tire with a solution of mild soap and warm water. Rinse the tire with fresh water and dry it with compressed air. Okay. Next. Question 32 of 34. Which of the following are the desired effects of using allodyne on aluminum alloy? 1. A slightly rough surface. 2. Relieved surface stresses. 3. A smooth painting surface. 4. Increased corrosion resistance. Not selected. 1 and 4. Re selected. EXPL. Allodyne is a conversion coating used to prepare aluminum alloys for painting. It etches the surface providing a microscopically rough surface and forms an oxide film on the surface to increase the corrosion resistance. Okay. 
Next. In question 33 of 34, by its surfaces cause concern in chemical cleaning because of the danger of not selected, entrapping corrosive materials, rate selected, EXPL. By its surfaces are the parts of a structure that are covered in a lap joint. It is important when a structure is chemically cleaned that the fired surfaces be protected so that corrosive materials do not seep between the sheets in the lap joints. This would cause corrosion to form in an area where it is hard to detect. Okay. Next. In question 34 of 34. In which of the listed conditions is not one of the requirements for corrosion to occur? Not selected, the presence of an electrolyte radio button. Not selected, electrical contact between an anodic area and a cathodic area, radio button. Tap to toggle. Selected. Not selected, the presence of a passive oxide film, radio button. Selected. EXPL. There are four conditions that must exist before corrosion can occur. 1. The presence of a metal that will corrode, the anode. 2. Presence of a dissimilar conductive material, the cathode, which has less tendency to corrode. 3. Presence of a conductive liquid, the electrolyte. 4. Electrical contact between the anode and cathode. A passive oxide film is used as a corrosion preventive. Okay. More options button.